Let's wait and see if Elijah comes and gets him down. Surely there's going to be an intervention here. The Romans can't win. That's a terrible end to the story. These lies are not going to stand. Clearly, the payback for this is going to be huge and dramatic, and it's going to give Hollywood ideas for the future. When I was a kid, I had all of those expectations from the passion. There was no faith finders when I was a kid, so I was right here with all the adults, and I was like, I'm sure this is going to work out. I'm going to grab my popcorn because I cannot wait for the moment when God comes down and says, take that, Romans. When the turnaround is amazing and the payback is glorious. When the pain rains down, punishing all the evildoers. But no. That moment comes where we hear, and then he breathed his last, his last. And we all kneel. Wait just a minute. How could this be the story? We're still not over the shock of it. We're not over the shock of Good Friday. And we're not over the shock of this being how life sometimes works. Why does God not swoop in when bad things are happening? We say to ourselves, you know, I go to church, so I'm sure this lump is going to be benign. Of course it's going to be benign. The doctor's going to tell me it's benign. Wait, what? Malignant? Surely the College of St. Rose will be fine. Surely the alumni are going to rally. The state is going to step in. Warren Buffett's going to write a check. What? That's impossible. It could close. It's going to leave a big hole in the middle of Albany. That can't be possible. Surely, the tanks that are at the edge of Ukraine are not going to cross the border. It's, it's just posturing. It's, poli- it's political. Putin would never do that. It's too dangerous. I'm sure when I get the call, I'm going to hear it's stage one. And I can do this. We're going to do this as a family. It's going to be stage one. Stage what? Whenever those things happen, that is the crossroads of faith. That's where our faith jumps the tracks. How is this supposed to be the story? How could this be the reward for being a faithful follower? When good things happen to good people, and payback happens to bad people, we're fine with that. But when bad things happen to good people, we don't even know how to compute it. Palm Sunday is a day when we realize that the way that we would like things to work is not always how things work. And the way that we would design the world is not necessarily the way the world works. Why doesn't God intervene? When I was a seminarian, I had a chance to live for a summer with the priests of Marinol down in Bolivia in South America. And it was an incredible experience. And one of the highlights was a chance to climb a mountain in the Andes. We were in a mountainous area and there were these amazing snow-covered Andes all around us. When I was told that we could climb Mount Tunari, I barely believed it. I said, I can't climb that. I never was able to do a chin-up in gym, not even once. There's no way I can climb that mountain. And they said, no, we've got a guide that can help. So it was 16,000 feet, which is three miles tall, more than three miles tall. I didn't climb the whole 16,000 feet. They take a van up to 11,000. But that means we climbed a mile into the sky. And we started at 11,000 feet, where the air is so thin Just breathing makes you nauseous. There's not enough oxygen. It's, that's twice as high as Denver, where we started. So, we went with this guide that 
was incredible. He was from the Aymara indigenous community, and he had been up that mountain many, many times. And so when we got off the van and we realized, oh my gosh, we can't even breathe this air. He said, all right, let's go over to this plant. And there was a bush there. And he said, collect some leaves and put them in the hollow of your cheek. This plant has a medicinal property that's going to make it easier for you to breathe. He said, when we came to this crossroads, he said, all the people that climb the mountain climb up this way. He said, you don't want to go that way. We're going to go this way. When he saw me drinking out of my water bottle, he said, don't, don't gulp. You don't want air in your stomach. Do not gulp. Sip slowly. And he said, remember, you're going to need the water more on the way down than on the way up. With him, we made it up the mountain. There might have been a little bit of upset stomach for some people along the way. There might have been some areas, leave her alone for a minute, she'll be fine. But, but we made it. And there's pictures of me at the summit that I cannot believe. It looks like it was photoshopped. But we could not have done it without that guide. And that guide could not have done it if he didn't know that mountain like the back of his hand. He had to know where we were going in order to guide us. You can't take someone where you haven't been. And that is what Jesus is for us, the guide. There's not a thing we could bring for him on the trail that he wouldn't know how to handle. We are often disoriented and lost on the trail, but every time we're going through something, we can look up at the cross and we can know that he knows. After what we just heard, we can hear how silly it would be to look at him and say, Jesus, you just don't understand how hard I have it. You don't know how hard my life is. Come on, he knows. He's been through unthinkable things. He knows what unfairness feels like, what being the victim of lies feels like, what rejection feels like. He knows about unfair dying at a young age. He knows about suffering and pain. The thing that Jesus doesn't do is teach us hacks to avoid all these things. There are some Christian churches that you go to and they paint a really rosy picture, kind of a marketed picture of, if you follow Jesus, life's going to be great. You're going to have prosperity like you've never had before. You're going to draw the right people to you. It's going to be great. All you have to do is give your life to Jesus. And there's some beauty in the core of that message. But you and I know that does not make the lump benign. There will be a malignant lump in our life at some point. Or a stage four when we prayed for stage one. Or news from around the world that is devastating to hear. We know that following Jesus doesn't make our life easier. It might even make it a bit harder because we're going to be more sensitized to what other people are going through. But, but we know that this is the guide to take us over this terrain. This is the one who knows. And he's not just leading us to death. He's leading us beyond it. He's not asking us to take up our cross so that the story ends sadly. He's inviting us to take the story where it ends today and stay with him, to be with him in the midst of it. I think it's probably fair for us to say that we can't fully understand the story that we just heard today until some part of it is our story. Until we've had the loss of a job. Until after the divorce is final. Until after the chemotherapy. We don't fully understand this until we've been with him somewhere in Golgotha. The suffering that we heard today is unthinkable. But there's something more amazing than that. And that is the depth of the love that caused him to undergo it.